You getting this? Watch this here. It's going to bless you. When, when most of us think of, of Pentecost, we, we think of Christianity. But the true beginnings of Pentecost are rooted in Judaism. All right? The word comes from the root word 50. And literally, watch this, it, it, it's 50 days after Passover. Sometimes it is referred to as the Feast of Weeks or the Weeks of Weeks because seven weeks is 49 days and the next day is Pentecost. Are you getting me here? So as we deal with Christian church as it relates to the Pentecost, there's some things we have to see. I want you to first know that the church now is immortal. I thank God for the church. It's immortal. From the beginning of time, before the foundation of the world, God had in his mind the church. Amen. The church, watch this. Want to know how old the church is? It's everlasting. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to the church. How old are you? I'm everlasting. Yeah, because in the beginning, before the foundation of the world, God had the church in mind. Oh, I got a word for you. God has you on his mind today. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a word for somebody because you feel like you left out. You're overlooked. You feel like right now that you ain't feeling what you're going through. God has not forgotten you right there in your seat. He got his mind on you. you oh my, he's mindful of you. That's why he don't only visit us, he habitates with us. He lives with us. Glory, he resides. He dwells on the inside of us. So if he's on the inside and he's more than a conqueror you got it on the inside stop looking on the outside to fulfill your need whatever you need is on the inside of you you don't need boo you don't need mom and them you don't need the pastor you don't need your brother your cousin and your uncle and aunt you need what's already inside so if you could just step back for a minute glory to god and tap inside of you you will find out that there is some earthly vessels that, 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 that there's some treasure in this earthly vessel and you will find the excellency of the power of God on the inside so when you begin to walk through the valley of the shadow of death you won't fear no evil for thou God is with you that rod come on y'all talk to me and that staff it comforted me thou has anointed my head with oil my cup Glory. It runs over. Tell somebody I may not look like it, but I got overflow. My cup runs. I got more than enough. I got so many blessings. I ain't got no room to restore. I need somebody to know that surely. I ain't got no. Tell somebody surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. <laughs> Uh, the church is immortal. Before the foundation of the world, God had it in mind. And he promised, watch this here, Portia, that he will um, give us what we need through the promise. And that he promised that even the gates, Portia, of hell shall not prevail. In other words, tell somebody you're looking at the church. <laughs> Come on, y'all got to bother your neighbor this season. You can't be looking at all funny. Tell them um, you're looking at the church. <laughs> uh, upon this rock I build you, <laughs> and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you you that's a promise that's why you can't lose you in a win-win situation you ought to throw your hands up and say i just got it like that you, you you don't have to watch this look glory to god you can boast in god you don't have to make any apologies when you're blessed you just bless you don't have to walk around acting like you pulled mouth and you you know you got this fake form of you being humble and i'm gonna just be humble and i don't want much and i just want just a little bit for me and my family I don't, I don't need a whole lot, God. I, I just want just a little bit for me and mine. That's all. You selfish. God, God, don't give me just a little bit for me and my wife and my family. Give me enough so I can bless everybody. <laughs> you ain't helping me here. I don't just want a little bit for me. I, 
I want so much that I could just roll up on somebody and throw a thousand out. It don't even matter. I don't want it back. I, I just got it good like that. I, I want to walk up to somebody and say, here, baby, here's 10,000. You all right? You good? You need some more? <laughs> y'all quiet. Look at y'all right now. You know you want that same blessing. If you want that same blessing right now, get on and stand up on your feet, clap your hands and sit back down and say, God, give me overflow. Oh, God. I, 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 I ain't hooping about um, about four months and I ain't going there today. Uh, tell somebody he needs more power. So it's critical to see this here now. Jesus, he came into the world. And after his death, burial, and resurrection, Melvin, the church is formed. Watch this here. The church comes into reality the day of Pentecost. <laughs> Listen, let me say that again. Y'all didn't get it. That's why you see you're not excited. This is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. <laughs> 49 days, the 50th day after Easter. Mm -hmm. Pentecost Sunday. The Pentecost Sunday is the day that the church was full. <laughs> Happy birthday, church. <laughs> Y'all yeah, still ain't got it. It's critical to see this because the Bible says suddenly a sound like the uh, blowing of a violent wind came from where? Mm, it came from heaven. Mm, uh, he says, watch this here. And, and when Pentecost, on the day when Pentecost fully come, they were with one accord, one Honda, uh -huh, in one place. Mm -hmm, and suddenly, uh, I, I got to stop right there and preach for 49 weeks. <laughs> some of y'all need a suddenly miracle right now. You, you broke down and you're disgusted, need some money, and you need a suddenly miracle. Uh, shake your neighbor, shout suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. God going to turn it around. God going to make it work for you. Suddenly you're going to get a promotion. You need suddenly in your life. The Bible says suddenly. There was a sound from heaven. Uh -huh. as of a, a sound as of a rushing mighty wind watch this and it filled all of the house and there appeared watch this cloven tongues as a fire and it sat on each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues of the tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and there in jerusalem were jews and devout men from all over the world who sat there and heard their language being spoken of and when the noise came the bible says they came together all these folk doing passover <laughs> every nation under the heaven came Jews from everywhere. And when they begin to hear their own language from some Galileans, they were confounded and marveled and amazed. So they get together and say, how in the world are they speaking our language and they're Galileans? Ah, and some of them looked at the Galileans and said they must be drunk. Because mm. uh, they acting too excited. They, uh, they, on, they acting crazy up and they got to be drunk. And Peter stood up and said, wait a minute. They ain't drunk because it's 9 o'clock in the morning. This is that that was spoken of the prophet Joel. That in the last days my daughters and sons shall prophesy. I ain't got no church here. Ah, God, hell no. He said, listen, he said, man, and, and my young men, they will see visions, uh, and my old men will dream dreams, and my servants and handmaidens, the Holy Ghost will be on them too, and they will prophesy. But I want to get to this. I ain't going to get to this message. I see I can't get to the message right now. I'm going to just teach it. I'm going to go home. Is that all right? See, in the beginning, if you go to Acts chapter 1, the Jesus was there after the 40 days that he spent with the disciples you know he got up from the grave amen and he spent 40 days bodily form so for some of you who don't think he got up 
with his whole body. This is not mysticism. Jesus got up full body. Not no spirit, his whole body. Because he came to the disciples and said, listen, don't be afraid. I'm no ghost. Ghosts don't have a body such as I. <laughs> Touch me. This is me. <laughs> don't be afraid. Fear not. <laughs> Let peace be unto you. Mm. I wish I had a church that would help me. So in chapter 1 of Acts, he was there. He was dealing with the disciples, telling them about the kingdom of God is coming. And while he was telling them, he said, wait a minute. Before you go, because you remember in Matthew 28, 19, he told them to go. Mm -hmm. He said, go ye therefore, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. And lo, I be with you always until the end of the world. But then he gets in Acts, in Acts 1, and he tells them, no, don't depart from Jerusalem yet. I want you to wait. So, Father, what are you saying? Go or wait? He's saying both of them. But before you go, I want you to wait because when you wait, I'm going to put something on you extra so you can do the extraordinary. So he said, wait a minute. He's sitting there talking to the disciples. He's getting ready to go back into heaven, and he's telling the disciples, listen, I want you to go. Now, I want you to go, but I want you to wait first. Don't depart from Jerusalem. I want you to go to Jerusalem and go into the upper room, and after that, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Watch this. And you shall be my witnesses unto Judea, Samaria, and to all the uttermost parts of the world. And after he talked about that, he was sucking up in the cloud. Mm, Y'all not helping me here. Ah, God. And when he was up in the cloud, here's the disciples gazing in the air. And two angels appear in white garments and said, why are you gazing up in the air? The same Jesus that's taken up will come back again. Ah, uh, Y'all not helping me here. So I can imagine in my spiritual imagination, the disciples saying, well, Jesus telling us we're supposed to go all over the world and preach this gospel. He haven't giving us any instructions. I mean, what are we supposed to do? He's telling us that he's going to give us some power and we're supposed to go all over nations. We ain't got no money. Judas stole the money. We broke us all. Get out. How we going to get around? We ain't got no car. How we going to make it all over the world? How we figure this out? So one of them finally realized that he said, I want you to wait, but I want you to go to Jerusalem into the upper room. Y'all not getting this here. Uh, he said, I want you to go in the upper room, and I want you to lay there, and I want you to pray. I want you to seek my face. I want you, everybody, to get on one accord. I want you to have some unity because I'm going to have something for on you that you can do greater. The reason why he didn't tell his disciples to go immediately because he recognized the fragility in men. He recognized the normalcy, the human propensity that men have when they face great challenge. Uh, when men, men have a proclivity, when great challenges come upon them or vicissitudes of life come upon them, they fold up, they give up and die because they don't recognize what's in them that will keep them to make what they have to make through. Are y'all feeling me here? So he understood, so he said, wait. Uh, let me prove it. Wait. Let me show you when he said, wait. You're going to see it in a minute. It's on the screen. He said, in Acts 1, 4, four he said, and being assembled uh, together with them, commanded them that they should not depart. Watch this. Them Jerusalem, but what? Wait for the what? Promise of the Father, which said he ye have heard of me. You ought to give God praise for the word. Let you know that I'm telling the truth. He told them to wait. I need you to go to Jerusalem because I'm going to put some extra on your ordinary. Notice now that Jesus did have no hesitation in his statements about the importance of this baptism of the Holy Ghost. He was not about to send them out to preach the gospel without the gift. Mm -hmm. We understand now that th this gift is not their salvation. Here's the teaching experience. Watch this here. They already had experienced that following Jesus' resurrection. When Jesus said in the book of John, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Look at the screen, John 20, 22, New Living Translation. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus had already had given the Holy Spirit following his resurrection in salvation. That's when the new covenant was in effect. But this experience in the upper room that we had read in Acts chapter 2, verse Verse 1, watch this, was not about conversion. It was about provision. Mm, get this here. It's going to bless you. The provision of a gift of power. Um, that's what we need. Yeah, we need power. The power of the Holy Ghost, which is able to come alongside the believer. Watch this, to equip him for service, ministry, and the work of the Lord. He is, watch this, the paraclete. Amen. The Holy Ghost.
Ghost, the third person of the Godhead. He's not a it. He's not the it. It moved. No, it's a he. He has a personality. Uh, glory to God. He is the paraclete that will come beside me and walk with me and, and talk with me and reveal the truth of me. He will purify me, the Holy Ghost that's inside me. Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? That's why you got to take care of your body. That's why you got to treat your body right. That's why you can't, you got to watch what you look at. You got to watch what you hear because the spirit of God is in you because you are in the church. No longer do I dwell in buildings and brick and mortar. I dwell in the people of God. That's why you can do greater work than Jesus did because you're looking at a bunch of Jesus wrapped up all in one. If you can only understand who you are in God, folk cannot never put you down another day in your life. Yeah. <laughs>